Virgin Media Shorts, championing undiscovered talent. This panel is about um, get, getting a film out there, making it successful, um, the secrets of distribution and exhibition. Um, so um, in the past, when I worked for Life Size Pictures um, and I um, uh, exec produced lots of short films on behalf of the UK Film Council, um, I also, like Will, I previously worked at the British Council um, as a film advisor. So I've spent lots of time kind of seeing short films and how they've kind of got on once they've been made, whether they've done well on the festival circuit um, or whether they've done well, you know, things are sort of changing and people are trying to do more online and so on. Um, and now that I'm a producer, I now have to kind of go through the, the struggle of working out what to do with films and trying to get it into festivals and so on. Um, so um, how many of you have had a film um, that you've made that's got into a festival? So quite a few. Um, and has anyone kind of actually focused on having more of an online presence than, yeah, so a couple of you as well. That's great. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to ask um, the panel to introduce them, themselves and just let us know what you do and um, how you get involved with um, distribution and exhibition. Philip? Um, yes, my name's Philip Ilson. I'm the director of and the founder of the London Short Film Festival, which just celebrated its 10th year in January this year um, and uh, we're a festival that takes place in venues across the whole of London but mainly at the ICA and the Curzon Soho but everywhere from Rio to Riverside um, but I'm also the short film programmer or one of the short film programmers uh, for the BFI London Film Festival as well alongside uh, Simon Young who was here earlier on one of the one of the panels he's the other short film uh, programmer for the BFI London Film Festival. So yeah, I'm, have, I've worked at other festivals as well, but mainly I'm uh, a shorts programmer. Great, thanks. Tom? Uh, my name is Tom Vaughan. I uh, am responsible for distribution at Future Shorts. Uh, we are a London-based short film distribution label um, with about 400 films on our roster. And we also operate a um, film festival which anyone around the world can screen. Plus we have an online channel on YouTube, um, which is quite popular too. I think it's got about 180,000 subscribers now, so it's doing quite well. Hello again, for those of you who are in the last panel. <laughs> for the purposes of this panel, I will be uh, Will Massa, Senior Film Advisor at the British Council. Um, so the British Council is the UK's cultural relations organisation. We uh, develop um, relationships between the UK and other, cult uh, other countries in a number of different areas, but um, one of the main things that we do is we have an extensive arts programme of which film is a key component. Um, so we spend a lot of time championing new British work um, from up-and-coming filmmakers, independent cinema, and look for ways to develop creative collaboration between countries. Um, it's very interesting and each person in our team, there's six of us, has a specialism and my specialism is short film, partly because of some of the um, stuff I've done prior to working at the British Council and partly because I'm just a, a big fan generally. Um, and we run something called the, uh, the Short Support Scheme, which has at its heart um, a travel grant fund that we operate in partnership with the British Film Institute, which means if your film has got into... Uh, one of the festivals on our key festivals list, of which there are about 33, you can apply to us for funding to cover travel and accommodation costs to travel to that festival because we believe that international travel and talking about your work and being plugged into that international context is as much a part of filmmaker professionalisation as actual filmmaking itself. It's, I suppose it's some of the things we were talking about earlier, talking about your work, um, presenting your work and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll just plug this very quickly because they're, they're outside, but these are our two. There's some more information about them those outside so pick, pick them up on the table as you go out but yeah I do, um, shorts is my specialism and promoting uh, them to international programmers and kind of working with uh, programmers like Philip to develop things here in the UK as well is what we do to get the best out of new UK filmmakers. Brilliant, thanks. So um, we will talk about all the different areas um, in a bit more detail. So this is, might be too, this might be a difficult question, but just in a nutshell, is it possible to say, you know, what's the ideal thing? You've made a short film. Um, is, there, is there sort of an order of what should happen to it um, in an ideal world in terms of it getting out there, um, in terms of it kind of being successful, being seen? Or do you think that's all completely changed and sort of old traditional? 
um, traditional route is not does not exist anymore. What do you think, Will? Um, I think it's kind of different. It's increasingly kind of different strokes for different folks a little bit. Um, I think all the time during you can you can filmmakers could do themselves a lot of favors. You know, while they're in production, they can start to think about festivals. You have a fair idea of when your film's going to be finished. Obviously, that sometimes spirals. Um, out of control, but you have a fair idea of, of when it's going to be finished. You have plenty of opportunity to be develop, starting to develop your online presence around the film, starting to write up, you know, get some good stills, uh, maybe a bit of a press pack together, that sort of thing. And then, uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I still think the festival circuit is very, very important in terms of... Um, using it not only to get it in front of an audience and, and to get a bit of uh, prestige uh, and buzz around the film if you've played in a particularly good festival or won an award at a particularly good festival, that can then translate back in the UK to getting the attention of a, a commissioner or a financier or a, a distributor or what have you. But I think, you know, there's no, there's no substitute. There's still no substitute, really, for kind of getting a bit of research done about the, about the world of film festivals, which is ever-shifting... Uh, ever-growing, um, mercurial, difficult to predict. Um, so sitting down with a kind of Excel spreadsheet and working out which festivals you'd like to play in as, as a wish list, um, tempering that slightly with being realistic about how kind of good your film is or whether it's going to fit in, in the kind of programming theme of that particular festival, and then kind of plotting out a few dates really um and work, uh, you know you've got about two years probably um to 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 work with your film in in that environment anyway um uh, so so you want to kind of be realistic with yourself about where you would hope it would play if it's not getting any traction in the festivals that you've picked out for the first six months or eight months then maybe think about changing your tactics slightly um uh, you know re researching those festivals and, and just being a bit pragmatic and um and uh, and practical about about getting it out there and and, le and learning as much as you can about that world and what festivals are valuable using the resources online like the ba BAFTA have a um, a very good list of films that you have to have played at to, in order to be eligible to um, for a BAFTA we have a list on our website that you can apply to us for travel grants that should narrow the field of what is. Uh, like I said, e ever growing. Like there are thousands of short film festivals now, yeah. um, every, everywhere from really significant ones to tiny, tiny local events. And, and it really depends on you what you want to get out of that process, I think. OK, cool. So you're kind of veering towards festivals as, you know, maybe the first thing that you would do, try and get it into film festivals. I know. I know. You also said it depends on the film. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think increase. Well, I don't know. These guys will be, be, be talk, be mm. better equipped to talk about this. But I think increasingly, there are. It's not either or. I think it's increasingly that that you could, you are able to pursue a festival strategy while developing an online okay. profile, an online persona, generating. <laughs> You know, and you, they're becoming more porous. Festivals are get, becoming less picky about premiere statuses. They're becoming less picky about whether a film might have screened online in a particular context. So I don't think it's just wait two years, then yeah. put it online. It's not that simple. That's anymore, interesting. So it's changing. Well, I think Tom will yeah. be able, yeah. Yeah, would you agree with yeah, that, Tom? I, I agree with Will on that yeah. front. I think it is changing quite a bit um, at the moment. And I do think that the most important thing is trying to get in your mind an idea of where you want your film to go and what, what is most important to you. Um, for some people, it will be much more important to have um, huge exposure online, um, which may sometimes hinder a festival strategy, but increasingly it's not so important, I don't think. I think, um, I think there was a film called Notes on Biology, which was, I think it was put online and then it won Best Animation at South by Southwest this year, I think. Um, so I don't think it is as important uh, anymore. I would say as well that I don't think there is any harm in um, trying to get a, an idea of what you want to do with distribution um, before or, or simultaneously when you're thinking about uh, your festival strategy. Um, I don't think it will harm at all being involved with uh, being, thinking about distribution, thinking about where you want your film to go, which distributors you think might be the most suitable ones for you. I think, I think you can increasingly do everything at once at the moment. That's interesting. Is, do you, is that the same in your experience, Phil? Do you think we notice more films actually kind of 
do, having a really big online presence and then uh, simultaneously doing the festival circuit? I mean, there's always been this um, kind of argument over the years of this thing you've got to wait to have a festival presence and play uh, a festival before online. And there are festivals out there that are still premier status festivals. Um, but those festivals that are premier status, the likes of Cannes uh, or Berlin, um, you're not going to get into. Mm. Um, I mean, those festivals, I think Cannes takes nine short films um, and they get something like um, thousands of films. Uh, even the London Film Festival, which is still a premier status festival, uh, they just changed that slightly. It's now a London premiere rather than a UK premiere. Um, but they, they still have the online, um, you can't be online. But even that festival, I mean, as a selector, I get 3,000 uh, submissions, and these are international submissions. Um, and I select about 30, um, and maybe six or seven of those are British films. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I mean, if you're, you know, if you think your film is good enough to get into those mm. festivals, then, then obviously hold back. But people say to me, oh, you know, I won't show my film online for another nine months in case I get into Cannes. Yeah. And I'm like, don't, just don't, just don't you won't get into Cannes. Okay. <laughs> you know? okay. I, haven't even, I haven't even yeah. seen your film and I know you no. won't get into Cannes. Um, you know, it's just. It's With, just hard. Yeah, so but very exceptional but, circumstances. But, you know, London Short Film Festival, we have no premiere status. Yeah. You can screen anywhere, online, any festival, any London screenings. You know, I mean, the thing is, there's very few places to see short films in uh, cinemas. Um, so, mm. you know, I think, you know, you, by limiting you can't, this you is negative, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. And what are, the, um, what are the main benefits of getting into a film festival? say well that you get to go and live acid test your film in front of an audience to see how it responds i think i mean obviously with a drama you can't probably can't tell but like a comedy for example seeing it i don't think there's a substitute for seeing no. a comedy in front of a, a live audience um it was probably simultaneously terrifying and, uh, and <laughs> gratifying if it works yeah. and everyone's <laughs> laughing or tittering away but i think you know more seriously they are um a lot of a lot of um networking opportunities um which pay massive dividends down the line, not only in terms of you developing relationships with your fellow filmmakers, um, which might lead on to potential collaborations later on down the line, but also developing relationships with festivals and festival programmers. And again, uh, that can just be a, a, a going up to them and say, thank you very much for programming my film. It means a lot to me. Um, I've got another film coming up. Um, look out for it when I submit yeah. it next year or, or, or what have you. But I think, you know, this is a industry that all the way down to the short film environment that functions as a very social industry. Yeah. It's not a huge industry. Um, you know, people network and they like to see the white of each other's eyes. So I think people used to predict that film festivals wouldn't exist by now because mm. why why would why would anyone travel to Cannes when they yeah. can just watch a screener from a sales agent online but it's not the point it's the point is about the human the the, the con congregating together enjoying film and then congregating together afterwards and enjoying talking about film and about filmmaking so a bit just being in that environment is ben is beneficial yeah um and having a chance to <laughs> to pick up the prize if you win it or having a chance to um you know, go up to another filmmaker you really admire and say, I really like your work or I really like the film you produced, would you see my script? You can't, it's just so much harder to do that uh, uh, online or, or kind of, yeah. you know, it, it just opens doorways being able to speak to people, I think. Philip, um, do, do you like it when, do you like to be able to meet the filmmakers that you've programmed their films? Is it, do you kind of build, have yeah. sort of certain yeah. relationships with filmmakers that you've yeah. programmed their films over the years? I mean, the London Short Film Festival has been lasting, as I said, 10 years, so... You know, there are filmmakers that can come back to us um, with their new film and sometimes we've seen a filmmaker's work over the years and we've decided, oh, like, we really like their work, we'll do a focus on them. Someone like Paul Wright, who's just um, got his first feature from Warp that's going to be in Cannes. We did a focus on him a couple of years ago. Um, so that's... And we did Andrea Arnold in one of the second... I think the second festival as well. Um, so it's... But, you know, a lot of... We see a lot of the same people coming back uh, just to say we are a UK film uh, focus at the London Short Film Festival so we only screen work by UK filmmakers produced here so yeah you do see a lot of um, a lot of filmmakers coming back again and again uh, which is great but I mean the only slightly negative side of that is that if you've programmed 
a couple of their films in the past, they would expect it, their film to be programmed yeah. every time, and uh, that hasn't that doesn't happen. No, you know, <laughs> to be strict. Yeah, and yeah. you know sometimes filmmakers have been a bit sort of funny about that, and like, oh, you why didn't you program this one? You know, um, but yeah, I think you know you build up that relationship, and it's that social thing as mm. well. They. Uh, come to the festival and make those relationships with other filmmakers and other people that they want to work with. As Will said, it's mm. all, you know, it's well, It important. sounds like it's very good to go, if even if we haven't got a film in the festival. London Short Film Festival is a brilliant one for actually meeting lots of people. You'll get loads of filmmakers there. I always go and chat to people and it's good, yeah. good networking. I mean, I always say to people, go to Encounters as well, yeah. the one in Bristol, yeah. because the thing about London Short Film Festival is we're spread across the whole of London and we do have networking events, but with Bristol, you know, everyone is going to be in the watershed yeah. for like five, six days. Yeah. So It's really easy. You can yeah. just hang around in the same yeah, place. In the bar yeah. and, and it's, uh, it's quite a vibrant yeah. sort of environment. And also just watching the films because that will give you an idea of whether you, what your film is like and whether it's the kind of film that would get into one of those kind of festivals as well. So, yeah. Um, so... How, I mean, there's so many festivals, so how, do they all have different characters and how, how, what, how should we have a strategy? I mean, it seems like more and more festivals are charging um, a fee to apply to the festival. So how should we formulate a strategy and know what, we, what our film is like and which festivals to apply for? I mean, the charging thing is a bit mm. of a problem. Um, I mean, we charge at the London Short Film Festival. Most festivals in the UK charge now. Um, America, everyone charges, yeah. and it's really expensive. I mean, yeah. we try and keep things as cheap as possible for filmmakers. Uh, whereas in Europe, no one charges, as far as I know. Mm. All the festivals are free. And I know a lot of filmmakers that refuse to actually put their films into festivals that charge and would only go for festivals that don't charge. Um, but yeah, it's, that's the big problem. You don't know how big the festival is or you might pay, you might get in, you might go, and then there's going to be two people and a dog sitting there, um, <laughs> you know, in the screening. Yeah. So I think, as Will said at the beginning, you know, you've got to do that research uh, in terms of, you know, is the festival well respected? Does it get good audiences? Um, I mean, there are only certain key ones on the on the circuit, really. And, you know, even just thinking of Europe, you know, there's Hamburg, there's Clermont-Ferrand, there's Tampere, um, there's Oberhausen, if you're more experimental. Um, there are obviously hundreds and hundreds and more, but they're the ones that kind of immediately spring to mind to me. Okay, where can we find a list of those? Well, <laughs> you can well you can find it on the on the British Council Film website in the short support scheme section. BAFTA have a list, the Oscars so, have a list. Sorry. So your list is a list of the fil uh, film festivals that the British Council think are good ones, basically. They're, yes, the they well are. Respected. Yeah, it's yeah. it's yeah, it's that's almost 100% true. They, they are all good. We all think they're good in their respective fields. What we have done is because we have finite resources and because we can't include every mm -hmm. festival, we, we, we tried to limit the list to festivals that we thought would be of kind of professional benefit for the filmmakers attending them. It, it, you know, either because it, it, the industry recognises that those are good festivals uh, to have played at or that there's a market attached which might allow them to generate further screenings for their work. Um, but what we've also taken into consideration is that there are animators, experimental filmmakers, documentary filmmakers yeah. and live action filmmakers out there. So we, we have Ann Arbor on our list, for example, which is a small festival, but it's quite important in the experimental world. Okay. So, so it's quite key for experimental filmmakers of w who are legion um, and you know who tend to play in Rotterdam and Telluride and we also do South by Southwest because that's a really, really growing festival. Mm. It's increasingly prominent. Um, and we also do Annecy. And we also, you know, so we try to cater and hot docs in Canada. We try to cater for, for everyone, but we try to make it the best in that yeah. particular field, as well as incorporating the big hitters, Berlin, Cannes, Venice. Um, okay. Uh, Sundance. So you can look at that. That list sounds really useful. And also yeah. the list of uh, BAFTA qualifying. Yeah, ba ba qualifying. BAFTA's list is a really yeah. good place to, 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 to draw up. And, it, and this isn't to say that if your film gets into a festival that isn't on one of those lists that it's not worth screening at. Of, co of course it is. They're just kind of uh, a mechanism, if you like, to, for you to marshal some of the information. Because if you go onto websites like Without a Box, um, 
God, you could be there for forever. If you had, if you had yeah. a finite, uh, infinite time and infinite money, you could be there forever just applying to festivals. And it's just about not kind of carpet bombing. Yeah. It's just a place, it's just a place to start. I think there are about 75 on the BAFTA. We've got 33 on ours, yeah. about 75 on BAFTA's list. And they incorporate a lot of good festivals um, that we would love to have on our list, but for various reasons, you know, yeah. our list can't, can't grow any bigger at the moment. So without a box and short film depot, in case any yeah. of you haven't seen it, um, is a place that you can, it's brilliant actually because they haven't always existed and you used to have to go to every individual website and look for their guidelines and their deadlines and their fees but this is one place where you can go and enter all your details and then apply it's a bit overwhelming but it is ultimately a bit more efficient it saves, you, it saves you hours on forms yes so, um, you don't have to fill out your information once <laughs> once yeah and it's a bit like takes a long time at first mm. but then you've done it and it's kind of yeah so that's good mm. can I just ask if the BAFTA list is only UK festivals no yeah. Oh, it's, it's your... It's, yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. So that list is basically, it means that if you... It's the list of festivals that if you get in, it's, if you get into that festival, then you qualify for a short film. Yeah, if you've played in that festival, yeah. you can then... you can. I hope I'm getting this right. I think yeah. the Oscars, you have to have won. You have to have won, at, yeah. At the festival on their list. In the BAFTAs, you have to have played um, uh, in one of their festivals to then be eligible. It's, you know, it's a... It's a uh, frankly, it's a, de it's a device, um, and, and we all need one to... Uh, do you, there has to be some sort of framework of evaluation in, in a climate where there are thousands of short films coming out every year. Mm. There has to be some sort of quality threshold for kind of, you know, they use it as to determine their awards uh, to be eligible yeah. for a BAFTA. We use it to determine financial support for travel. You know, it's... it's so how, are we, how should, are we meant to know what our film is like and whether <laughs> it is good or whether, we, you know, what kind of festivals we should, we should be going for? I think you should. Yeah, uh, Tom. <laughs> well, I think the key is just trying to do as much research on online festival programmes. You can view which films are in um, every festival. Try to find out through synopses. Try to try to watch as many. Try to attend as many as you can, and get a sense. It's it's very hard. I imagine the hardest thing is having your own piece of work and trying to judge whether it is suitable for any one particular festival because it must be extremely difficult to go and watch a programme of films and think that's that's the kind of programme that my film should be in but it's the best piece of advice I think it's mm. just trying to trying to work out what watch a lot of films online as well increasingly um, films are being put online which have been into festivals um, particularly ones from a few years ago um, watch as many films as you can and try and get a sense you can also, you, you can usually tell to an extent from um, looking at a list of films in any particular festival programme whether your film will be completely inappropriate. I think if, if, yeah. there, if there are quite a few drama-centric <coughs> um, festivals which if you're making a really quirky out there animation it wouldn't, mm. wouldn't be suitable for. Um, but it's just spending a lot of time trying to find out what people show. So yeah, kind of looking at the length, whether they program really long short films yeah, or certain like comedies. Certain festivals yeah. only show yeah. films of a certain length. I yeah. think Cannes is what like fourteen minutes or so. I yeah. think all their films are um, about. Um, so you wouldn't get in if you had a two-minute animation. Um, just do as much research as you can and watch as many films as you can. And can it, is, are, there, are there any advantages of getting into like some of the really small, like really small festivals around the world? You know, if you, if you maybe got into a few, do industry look at that? Do yes. people respect it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, distributors look at look at lots of festivals, not just Cannes, Berlin, etc. Um, if you if you are able to uh, do well in a small festival, you will be noticed. So you might have industry. a nice list of like other festivals, even if they're not the big ones Absolutely. that you've got into. Yeah. Absolutely. Is it fair to, uh, to say perhaps that also the, 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 what's good for a festival programme at a particular festival isn't necessarily the same kind of thing that you're looking at Absolutely. at your end and you might be more interested in an audience winner, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. something that you know connects well with an audience that you can sell. And there, you know, I, I don't know, a great festival like Oberhausen plays stuff that might be a little bit more ch more challenging work let's say a festival a lot of the north american uh festivals that tend to be very kind to uk work probably because of the linguistic because uh, of the shared um language issue also tend to be very kind to uk 
comedies like so Palm Springs for example takes takes a lot of UK comedies and that and comedy is something that works very well online I yeah think. so like, online and maybe a, maybe a slow build European influenced uh, cinematography heavy uh, drama might not be so good for that space so it's mm. what's yeah. good for the goose isn't necessarily good for the that's very often the yeah. case it's it's going back to knowing what your film is um, and realizing that if you're not getting into a certain selection of festivals it does not mean that your film a isn't good or b won't be successful somewhere it's just working mm. out um, where the home is for your film Sounds like it's a good idea to talk to lots of other filmmakers about their experiences with festivals as well as part of your research. I mean, the other thing is that um, some really small random festivals sometimes will, that year, have a budget. They might be doing a UK film focus. They might have a budget that year to fly some people over. So wouldn't discount festivals. You never no. know. Um, but anyway, so um, that sort of leads on to talking about sales agents. Um, just, you know, kind of... In sort of in conjunction with talking about festivals, um, but firstly, I think sometimes it's confusing. What's the difference between a sales agent and a distributor? Well, a sales agent is, I think, the definition would be someone who um, negotiates the rights of your film and sells to distributors. I think, and distributors would be people who would um, get your film seen more. But I think there's a bit of a blur there. I mean, I think... Particularly uh, with shorts. Particularly with shorts, yeah. yeah. I mean, we would... I would say we're a sales agent and a distributor. Okay. I, d I don't think we're... I, I don't see the classification as, as strongly as in features um, there. So, um, yeah. Okay. I think, I think it's pretty blurred. And who are the main... Um, we'll, call them, we'll call them short film sales agents <laughs> for now. Um, who are the main short film sales agents in the UK or um, overseas who pick up UK shorts? So in the UK, it would be, um, it would be us. And uh, Shorts International are, are very big. Also Dazzle, I, I would put there in the UK. Yeah. And, and internationally, um, there are dozens internationally, uh, particularly in... in uh, Western Europe. Um, some of the big ones would be premium in France. Premium and they pick films. up UK shorts? Uh, they sometimes pick sometimes, up yeah. uh, UK shorts. Um, what media in Canada, I believe, picks up yeah. UK shorts um, a bit. The ones, a lot of American distributors will tend to, will, will often pick up UK shorts. Um, but I think that UK shorts are picked up everywhere, really. I think they, they do have more success perhaps in the US, partly because of the language <coughs> thing. But I think if your film is really good and it's made in the UK, I think you'll have a lot of distributors from lots of different places after you. OK. I don't think, um, I don't think it's any, any one place. I think having a UK-based distributor, if you're a UK-based filmmaker, can be a lot more helpful because you can often meet them. You can often attend events that they'll be at. Um, some people find that a lot more um, reassuring, I think. Yeah. So, has, has any is there anyone else that you, that's missed off that you've heard of that any other sales agents? Um, Hamburg's you, quite big. Hamburg, yeah. Hamburg yeah. Took up a lot of UK yeah, yeah. Yeah. shorts actually. And how do you get a sales agent for your film? How do you how do you find someone to pick it up? But where do you find your shorts? We um, we attend festivals. We um, look at festival programs. See which ones. Um, see films, source them in to, if we haven't attended the festival. Um, we also, because we have a, our own festival online platform, we have a submission system ourselves and everything that goes through that on Without a Box is considered for our distribution label too. Um, so w also, um, as Philip said, with um, previous films that have been in festivals, yeah. pre previous films which we have noted either in festivals or um, uh, new films from directors who we represent films of will often send us their new film and we can find it through there. Okay, so it sounds like actually um, getting into film festivals is a good way to start in terms of like them getting yeah. a sales agent it, up, rather it, than it waiting for help. a sales agent to get into film festivals. Yes. That probably happens more the other way around. Yes, yeah. probably. Yeah. Um, but there are films which we represent which haven't had big yeah. festival runs that we've found um, from online. Um, if, if something's been very popular online, if, it's, um, if we've seen it on Vimeo, if it's been um, 
if it's gone slightly viral, um, we'll often see it. Um, also, from just people writing to us, we'll often pick up films if, it, if it's oh, That's good, so you look very, at very things good. coming in. Yeah, yeah. It, I think it doesn't... Don't think that because your film hasn't got into a festival, it won't have a distribution life, because it doesn't always work like that. Okay. It can definitely help for yeah. a lot of films, um, but particularly for shorter ones, it's not as important. That's really good to know. So I was going to say, if your film doesn't get into any festivals, it's not, doesn't mean it's a complete failure. Definitely There's not. Some other avenues. Definitely okay. not, yeah. Good. And can having a sales agent um, help to get into a festival, do you think, Philip? Do you think that, um, <laughs> that um, sales, like films that have sales agents are more likely to get into a film festival? Uh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's the, whether the film's any good. Um, it doesn't really... Uh, matter who represents it or you know the film as a festival you know we get sent films and every mm. film is watched it's, yeah uh, we don't watch one film over another film no. you know I know a lot of people do think that some festivals do work like that and I do speak to the filmmakers who, who say things yeah. like oh the only way you can get into a film festival is by making a friend of the programmer okay and yeah. you know there's just that I wouldn't work like that maybe there are festivals like that no. But you know, it's um, you're watching the work, and that's that's mm. that's where it stops, really. Maybe it helps. Would you say it maybe helps more internationally because you're very you're you know you know the UK scene really well, and you ha you know you go through submissions. But I suppose it um, like say like someone like Clermont Market, um, which is a Clermont Ferrand is a um, one probably the biggest short film festival in the world, and all of the um, lots and lots of programmers for short films go to that festival every year so they will all meet each other and meet some of the sales agents go and they'll have the shorts they're representing so I'm just wondering whether that could help at all if you you know want to get into some international film festivals. Yeah I mean for European work it's going to be easier when someone hands you a DVD or yeah. of a selection of Polish shorts because most countries when you go to Clermont or when you go to um, Berlin, um, you go around the market, you can pick up DVD compilations from the various countries. So those films on that DVD have been obviously gone through the uh, selection process by the country yeah. that have put that DVD together. Um, and for the London Film Festival, Uni France send over big boxes of films specifically from France, so they've already gone through that, um, that filter of of going through an organisation like Unifrance before they turn up at the festival. Um, but for the London Short Film Festival, we don't, we just basically, people send direct and uh, everything gets viewed and then the selection is made. Okay, it's cool. It's that, that simple. And what, um, I mean, as, as well as sort of festivals, you're obviously selling shorts to buyers. Um, how much should we focus on making money from our shorts and, do you have any sort of examples of a typical sales figure? I think how much you should focus on making money depends on how much you want to make money from the film, really. Whether you see um, the film as being um, a stepping stone to making other things, whether you want your film to just get seen as much as possible, or whether you think that it's going to make you rich. I don't think it's going to make you rich. Um, <laughs> So I wouldn't pick that one, no. but but <laughs> but it can help with uh, if your film is successful with sales. It can certainly help to getting a budget together for making something else. Mm. Um, the second part was about how much you could expect. It, yeah, it, it sort varies, of typical. It varies hugely depending on the film and who's buying and and where it's being shown. But but television on the whole still pays the most. Okay. Um, Europe is quite quite good for that um, Western Europe you can you can still get about you tend to be paid uh, per minute um, on film but I hate saying that because I don't want people to think that they need to make really long films now <laughs> as a result because it doesn't work like that but um, but you can you can get up to about 500 euros a minute um, from from selling to one of the big uh, broadcasters in in Europe um, and then it will go down depending on who, who else it is in, in the UK, it's not as high as that. And online isn't as high as that. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's worth doing distribution because it can help 
towards getting other stuff made. Okay. And I guess um, it's a good thing as well for your CV as Absolutely, well if you yeah. actually, if your film's made some sales, it yeah, looks good I, for exactly. sort of I mean, people commissioning. And yeah, stuff. saying your film has been on, for example, Channel 4 is going to be worth more to you probably than the amount of money that you would get from the film being on Channel 4. Yeah. Do they screen films, short films on Channel 4? Yeah, they've started doing the shooting gallery again. Which is kind of still like two or three o'clock on in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very late. It's very late. Yeah. Also random acts as well. Random acts, that's um, true. Yeah. Yeah. Which are shorter, quirkier things. They also buy from that. But but I think, I think um, yeah, it, it, it varies hugely. And it, it varies completely depending on what kind of film you've made. Um, but, but most importantly, it's whether it's really good. If it's really good, then you will make quite a bit of money from it. Um, it won't it won't be enough to support you and your family and everything, but it will it will be you'll think that's nice. Yeah. I'm really pleased I've yeah. got that. It's a nice bonus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Will, when you yeah. are um, when you've got your commissioning hat on mm. for um, collaborate mm. and so on, um, do you notice? Do you kind of notice whether they've had people, filmmakers, have had a sales agent, or or do you think about festivals, or do you look at you know, what sort of things are you impressed by in terms of where people's previous work has been distributed? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you, if you look at it, uh, we collaborate initially, it's just um, scripts that come in. But, yeah. but towards the latter end stages, we look to attach directors or we, we take a decision on whether a director might make their own script. But, but generally, kind of in, in commissioning that I've been involved with, that has involved filmmakers sending in a CV or a filmography or a showreel. Um, you know, there, there are festivals that, p that people respect in, in the world. So if a filmmaker is played at South by Southwest, yeah. um, I, that kind of gives a, a there might be a pre-excitement about watching their next short. I think that's, I think that's a reasonable psychology. Um, in terms of sales, yeah, I mean, I think different sales agents have different personalities. I, 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 I you know, future shorts, You've, you're quite an indie brand, um, and they're the kind of films that you take on. I've all, I've always liked they're quite they're quite indie films, and you've got a very careful brand. Perhaps um, they might shoot me for saying it, but Shorts International have a slightly more broader um, broader um, taste, or they or they appeal to a broader market. Yeah. I, I don't know. So different different people have different tastes. In terms of looking at the filmmaker, I think. It, like I was saying earlier, if your film gets your film could get picked up for sales where it might not have played in any festivals mm. and vice versa, things work in different environments. I'm uh, I know lots of good films that have never got any traction on the festival circuit. I also think that on a on a year round basis, there aren't just thinking of the last couple of years, there are only two or three shorts that have probably played at more than five or six. Good international festivals. That, you know, it's very rare where you get um, that short that travels and does a hundred festivals yeah. anymore. I don't. You just don't see that very often. Um, so, any, I, I'd be happy to see a, a, um, if I, if I saw a short and and someone had told me it had played on two or three or four of the festivals that were either on the BAFTA list or our list. I think I think I'd be pretty excited about yeah. what, about watching it. Um, basically, and that's just that's a number of factors because we've got to, we use shorthand. Everyone uses shorthand for different things. So if you've played an X festival, that probably suggests you, yeah. you, it might be good. Then yeah. again, sometimes programmers choose stuff and it doesn't. You don't connect with it at yeah. all, and you think that's that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no you know there's no hard and fast rule. And for the same and by the same token, sales agents might pick up a short because they know they can sell it because it's got a particular cast member yes. in it and it's all part of the kind of this long tail revolution that people talk about where they know that it's actually they know that this actor will convert to people watching the film the film might not necessarily be great so it's you know they aren't they aren't always the same thing but no. I think shorts international are quite open about that i mean simon i've been on the panel with him before and yeah. he says if you've got famous uh, person in your film, they would immediately be interested in seeing it. Okay. Um, whereas that doesn't really translate to festivals because yep. you know, no. it doesn't really matter if the film, if there's a famous person in the film or not. If the film's not very good, then um, then you know it's not going to get shown. But I think there's a short film uh, from a few years ago starring starring Robert Pattis Pattinson, who um, which ended up being one of the most watched short films on iTunes and right. made, made so much money. But I don't think it, well, it wasn't a great film. It didn't do many, if any, festivals. 
So uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. That's there's, interesting. A, there's an inverse to that mm. when it's um, sometimes you get filmmakers when they talk about their work or write about their work in an application or something, they'll say they've played in Cannes when they've actually played in Cannes short film corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll say that they've played <laughs> at X. What, pro, people, it's difficult this because you, I, you know, you always want filmmakers to have self belief and um, and to kind of will themselves on to be positive about themselves. themselves. But the the, yeah. the amount of times you've seen award winning award-winning filmmaker yeah. or prize-winning filmmaker. And yes, you may, you may have won a prize, but I think you've got to be realistic about what where it's worth winning a prize slightly. And this yeah. this is, ju and I, I just mean this from a kind of commissioning industry perspective as you look to go up the thing. I don't want to suggest for one minute that it's not worthwhile winning a prize at your local film festival or, or at any number of film festivals, but you've got to kind of look at yourself in the big picture of things and, and work out when it's appropriate to, to, to say you've to played say in a yeah. particular festival yeah. to describe yourself as a, as a prize winning uh, filmmaker because frankly there are a lot of prizes now. Mm. <laughs> I think the, the, the tip there is don't lie. Well don't and lie actually, and don't kind of... Or exaggerate. Yeah. I mean I Google everyone so and I assess for, for schemes like short film schemes yeah. and so on and whenever someone puts their things in because I'm really used to the, the can thing yeah. as well which is a market anyone can pay. I mean they do, they ask, they do have a bit of a selection yes. process but yeah. people do that all the time but I always check people always check so there's no point lying or exaggerating you'll no. get found out yeah. but equally like if someone's quite honest and rather than says award winning they say you know I won this particular prize yeah yes. that actually doesn't look stupid because no, you're right, it, you're right, it's, yeah. that's what it is so it's just I think being yeah. honest and you are technically good. award winning yeah. so maybe I'm being <laughs> nasty <laughs> well it's just they haven't said yeah. what the festival is but yeah, yeah. um Yes, that's interesting, but I know that you've had, we were going to talk a bit about online, but you've had a whole panel of talking about putting your film online, where you've probably had some good examples and talked a bit more in depth about it. But it'd be interesting to just um, quickly sort of get your opinion, maybe on um, the point of um, maybe like Will with commissioning, you know, with with where there's a scheme or um, where there's a, someone who's going to put some money into short films. Um, or even features, um, are people, you know, taking, have things changed, but are people taking a bit more notice of people's online presence or, you know, how many kind of hits they're getting on YouTube? Because I think in the past people haven't really, haven't really, like, been bothered about it and often the guideline says must have won an award at, you know, it might be a list of festivals. Yeah. Um, but now... Some people are finding, you know, online success. Instead. I think people are paranoid about a space that isn't particularly curated, which yeah. is why they insist on, uh, you know, must have won an award at X festival. You know, the, the 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 difference in value is in those two arenas is probably shrinking all the time. But I think, um, yeah, I mean, would I? Would there be a point at which after 100,000 hits you'd commission a filmmaker? No, definitely not. I mean, that you know, it, certain things work very well in that environment, yeah. including people falling into holes, you know, <laughs> or banging their head or putting animals in funny costumes. You know, there, there are myriad reasons why 100,000 people might watch something. If you've got something that someone that's built up a really real loyal following with a series of comedy sketches with characters, et cetera, mm. and millions of people like them, you could say that that's an interesting basis to talk about contacting those people to see if they're interested in developing a sketch show or if they've got an inbuilt audience that could be translated out of that into, into something else, then yeah. So I think the web is not, it's not as simple as X filmmaker has had 100,000 hits, therefore they're good, they're good to go. You know, they have to have, they have to have the chop. They have to prove that they can make a make a, a string a story together that's longer than a minute. Um, yeah. It can't just be a gag. You know, that's a very particular type of short film. Um, uh, I think you know you see people who are do the most extraordinary stuff with VFX now on uh, in that space, and and their film wouldn't necessarily work well in a festival, but you you be pretty sure that if you had them in for a meeting and they had a solid enough pitch or an idea mm. that they could probably do something pretty impressive visually about it. So I think, you but know, the big things have been commissioned. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. And so it yeah. is another um, area in which talent can, f can can filter through. But I think it's I think conflating hits with talent is is could potentially quite okay. dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So it's very specific to, yeah. the, to the film and what yeah. it's doing. 
And, and Tom, is that the same with you? Kind of like, have you changed your opinion a bit on that or? We, we've always quite championed online feature shorts. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's always been something we've, we have on the whole thought has been quite good. Um, would, do I think I've changed in terms of how many views something gets? As to, would, that, would that make me more likely to think that it's It could be views or it could be just their general think, online presence. Yeah, or, um, I think, I, think um, I do agree with Will to an extent because the most popular films out there on YouTube are going to be cat videos and they're not, they're not really, they are. they're <laughs> hilarious, but we're, we're probably not going to pick those up. Um, but if, if your film has been getting a, a, a very large, um, more intelligent response from people online, um, then yeah, we are probably going to notice it more. And um, it's, it's, it's a way to have your film seen if it hasn't got into festivals. There are, if, if you're not going to get into a festival, you, you are going to need to get your film seen somehow. And people do watch online. We watch online. And so we definitely pick stuff up from, from online, which we think is, is a good quality and that we could sell. Um, there are certain films which uh, would be more suited trying to go through the festival route first before online. Yeah. Um, but but online is definitely a, a, a good platform for a lot of filmmakers, I'd say. Cool. Have you had any um, of those kind of films, Philip, like sort of real? Oh, not really sure. <laughs> no, I mean, it's the same answer, really. Yeah. It's, we get submissions sent into us, and yeah. we don't really go and look and see what's online. No. I mean, it doesn't really, um, it's not something that, that that is part of the work that I do. Uh, as a festival programmer, festivals get submissions sent in, the films are watched that way. Um, I mean, obviously, some of them are sent online through without a box or through yeah. with links uh, and stuff, but you work purely on the submissions. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't, the online presence doesn't really. It doesn't affect you doesn't that affect, much, no, your opinion. No. But in general, it, sort of as filmmakers, should we be trying to build our online presence or the, the online presence of a film? right from the start, you know, when the film's at script stage and how, what's the best way to do this? There's no harm, is there? Um, I think having, having a big social media presence w won't harm you, it won't always help. Mm. But if you've got a significant number of likes on, on Facebook, it will add to your presence. I mean, I exposure in that sense is, is always gonna, well, not always, usually gonna be good exposure. Um, I don't know how you feel about that with, um, in terms of commissioning stuff, getting funding. I just kind of think that every, pro every next project's the next project to an extent. I mean, the, that filmmaker has a track record. Or I would probably look at a show. I like to look at a showreel in a dark room. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that sounds creepy, actually. <laughs> I like to... I like to um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just think that's 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 entrepreneurial rather than. I mean, it's kind of part and parcel of yes. the same package, but it's just slightly the, it's the more, sort of veering towards the entrepreneurial end of the spectrum. It's about making sure that you're you've got a persona, um, mm. and that you are developing a, br a brand name around yourself as a filmmaker, or having but making sure that you've got a website, the, the character of which reflects the kind of work that you're interested in. If you're into quirky genre, have a quirky yeah. have a quirky genre website. It's harder with drama and stuff like that, but. Um, yeah, I'm interested in. I mean, it's it's so it strikes. Maybe I'm coming across as luddite, but it it's me such a crowded environment crowded, now. Yeah. Just just can't you know, Twitter feeds. You you blink and the, and your your the tweet you did has moved on by about twenty in the same space, depending on how many people you're following and whatnot. But um, you can't you can't not do it. I think is is, is the yeah. answer. You've got it's got to be part and parcel of you developing your the way you interact with the broader filmmaking community, yeah. not just for that short, but generally um, as you, as a, it's kind of career development, isn't it? It's just as important as, as it's, it's online networking. So it has to yeah. be another string to your bow in that sense. Um, sometimes you come to a filmmaker through, through the internet um, because they've, they've, they're interesting for, for different ways, ways and means, but ultimately at the, at the heart of it, the work is always the important. Yeah. Yeah. It's so always partly, the thing that speaks. You know, you can build yeah. a website around a around a, a, a bad film, frankly, and and the film yeah. it won't make the film any better. No. Though, so I partly, it's about kind of having making your making it easy to find your work yeah. or what you've done and making yeah. it clear and all yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
And also, I was going to ask whether um, one thing that people are like constantly talking about Kickstarter campaigns at the moment um, in terms of actually financing films, but ha is it something that people, anyone has used successfully as a sort of, you know, to raise some money for distribution? And because of all the, you know, like to get money to get into festivals <coughs> or to go to festivals. Well, Kickstarter to me is the most surprising yeah. and heartwarming innovation in that kind of space. I mean, I only wish we could, that's just not the environment, but if we could get that amount of money and give it to kind of really worthy causes as well as <laughs> filmmaking. And people are extremely generous yeah. on Kickstarter, giving huge amounts of money for, for short film projects, for all kinds, for Derek to finish the post-production, to go on a festival run, to, and people are extremely clever about the way in which they're raising money on those platforms I would have if you told me 10 years ago we're going to put a thing up where short filmmakers can appeal to the public to get money I would have la I laughed you out of town because it just I just maybe I've got a low opinion of human, human generosity but people are really generous and it's got a, it's UK it's open in the yeah. UK now and uh, you can use it I think yeah definitely if there aren't enough um funding opportunity well there aren't a huge amount of funding opportunities in the UK yeah. at the moment the BFI are doing some shorts collaborate do a few shorts um you know, a few, few other organisations as well. But um, so if you if you need a few bob to, to make your film, it's not a bad idea to get on Kickstarter as long as mm. you as long as you can find an uh, kind of uh, again going back to pitching this idea of you getting your getting something that appeals to the public and then making giving. I think it seems to me it's all about that sense of ownership of a project. If you can get if, if I can give you a quid and somehow I get a credit or like ten quid gets me a t-shirt and fifty quid gets me an invite to your opening night party, that's that's really nice. And yeah. people like to be involved in creativity. So, yeah, definitely, I think it's a I think it's a fantastic thing. I mean, there has been some negativity around this idea of people giving money for these kind of projects. There's a big thing that went out this week on why should we be giving uh, rich people money yeah. to do stuff? Yeah. Because uh, I think this was off the back of is it Zach Braff? Zach Braff. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. something, but. Um, but yeah, there is there is zero funding in this country outside of the couple of schemes that um, that will mention. I mean, mm. the BFI. We don't even know if the BFI scheme is going to be renewed. They only um, produced sixteen short films in this last batch. Um, so yeah, but I mean, the, the other side is that you know this is something that I say quite a lot that it actually doesn't cost very much to make a short film anymore. Um, you can just go out and make a film in a couple of hours this afternoon and it can be something that be good to get in, that would be good enough to get into festivals or uh, to get it online um, so you know the fact that you don't need a lot of money anymore is kind of quite positive because it means that people can get stuff made in some capacity yeah. um, unlike five ten years ago where you would have to get all sorts of funding and whatever in to, to make something that's uh, half decent uh, that's just not the case anymore mm. Um, sometimes you see films from Europe where there is quite a lot of funding, like in France, um, where they seem to have ridiculous amounts of money for short films. Uh, and to be honest, the work's bland and really boring and not exciting in mm. any way. Uh, sometimes when there's, you know, people are really passionate and just want to do it uh, and, and kind of have that passion to make the stuff, then they, that makes the work more vibrant yeah. and more interesting to me. Uh, not that I'm, you know, advocating <laughs> no. that stop all funding. <laughs> yes. But at the same time, you know, it does create interesting ways of of getting your work made. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to know that we that festival programmers are interested in our low budget shorts as well. I should probably plug Virgin Media Shorts competition actually because I was going to just talk brief. We're running out of time, but briefly about competitions. Um, Virgin Media Shorts are great another sort of place to put your film um really good if you and actually there's loads of brilliant really low budget um, films on there um so go and have a look um it's i think it's two minutes 20 the film has to be two minutes 20 um and that's another way that so want obviously you're putting a short online and people can will go on there to watch your film and will vote um and obviously if you win then your um, film might be made into a print which will be screened at, um at cinemas all around the uk and the and there's a prize for the winning film which is some money to make another short thirty thousand pounds thirty thousand pounds so um it's just been building building it's such a good competition so i would suggest that i would recommend ev everyone to have a go at putting something into that 
Are there any other competitions that are going at the moment? Yeah, Depict, yeah. Depict is a yeah. really great competition as well, um, which is run at Encounters Short Film and Animation Festival. It happens every year in Bristol, uh, September now. Uh, Depict is uh, 90 seconds or less, and it's it's really fun. And you, there's kind of loads of prizes that you get, kind of packages of support from BAFTA, Rich Council, shooting people, that kind of stuff. Um, other competitions... There's increasingly, I mean, increasingly, as brands get involved in this space, there are interesting opportunities for filmmakers. I think Bombay Sapphire did yeah. one quite recently, uh, where a writer had Reed, their film yeah, made. Right. Read the yeah. the employer, uh, going to have a ten grand prize for their short. They're, they're popping up all the time. Yeah. Just so, just keep. They're on increasingly the well yeah. respected as well, aren't they? Yeah. So in terms of you know industry yeah. taking notice, if you've yeah. won or you've yeah. got shortlisted, it's a really good yeah. good place to do it. Yeah. And they can be really low budget as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's about quality of ideas, I think, rather than. Yeah, exactly. High production and, and just really briefly, um, any kind of top tips about what makes your film stand out and what's really, as in, like in terms of you know um, when you're. What do you need when you're applying to a, to a film festival or to um, get you know get in touch with a sales agent? What extra things like synopsis, stills, that kind of thing? Read the guidelines on every on every festival to find out what what they actually want you to send them because the chances are that if they don't want it, they really don't want it. Make sure that everything's clearly labelled. Um, yeah, just make great work. I think <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but you know. That's, that's what it comes down yeah. to. I agree. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the hardest question in the world to ask is what makes a good short film? It's, there are so many different factors. It, it, it just has to have that, that spark, I guess. Uh, in terms of um, what things you would need for sales, um, you will always be told, but um, uh, promotional, any additional promotional materials will, will always be useful. Um, but I would say don't worry too much about that until you have entered into discussions with the distributor. Okay. Uh, yeah, impossible to answer. It's mean, <laughs> quite a big question. Yeah. yeah. I suppose I, was also, I, I always harp on about having a really good still, and because you do need to think about that when you're making the film. They generally, screen grabs generally aren't as good, um, even if it's just one key image from the film, because if you get into a festival or into a, someone's catalogue for sales agent, um, you know, it, that can really make it stand out, can make someone watch your film if they're looking through lots of films in, you know, in a screening or a video tech. Um, and also a really good one-line sort of tagline, I think, is really useful as well. Actually, I'm um, not so sure about the one-line tagline. Cause no, OK. When I watch a film, I kind of want to know what it's about, and just saying that one-line tagline is doesn't really give you much information. It'd be nice to have a sort of... A short couple synopsis. Of, a, just a couple of sentences saying this film is about blah, blah, blah. Okay. Because the tagline is just something you see on posters, you know, for features, and very, they're very abstract normally. Okay. Um, so Those yeah. words get mixed up all the time, don't yeah. they? Tagline, short synopsis, logline. Mm. So maybe it's good to have, like, a one-line thing and something that's a couple of sentences yeah. saying what your film is about. Which the kind still of comes thing's interesting as well because we don't mm. put a still for every short in our brochure because uh, we don't do a massive big brochure because we don't have the money but when we're looking through the stills we pull out the ones that are visually very interesting um, that immediately look good on the page okay uh, so yeah but you are right you just get constant still after still of just someone's head <laughs> yeah you know, just a, in a shot from the film with two people I mean I know it's difficult with short films yeah. because a lot of the time they're just dramas and the character based yeah thing. character based yeah. so it's it is hard but it's just something it's worth thinking about to try and come up with something that kind of is a bit more interesting. Okay, yeah. cool. Do we have any questions at all? Have to wait for the microphone. So there's one there. Oh, is it on? Um, I've got a question for Tom. Um, I directed a comedy short film, which is about a day in the life of the world's unluckiest man. And um, the script which I didn't write, was the winner of a short screenwriting competition. It was judged by people from Comedy Central, working title. Um, and it's premiered at London, and it did win an award, Will, but at a very small festival, but Brits and Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, it's taken quite a long time to go on the festival route, and I'm finding as a comedy, it's kind of struggling with some festivals. So it's kind of making me a bit itchy to get it out there. And one of the things that I'm looking at doing is possibly doing a UK, because I've got a very well-known UK <laughs> cast, doing a one-off 
UK theatrical screening with a Q&A with my cast, who've got like 100,000 Twitter followers between them or whatever. Um, do you have any views on if that's kind of a good thing to push a short in the international kind of market if you're struggling a bit with festivals and where in what kind of timeline is it good to do that and just second part kind of to all of you i've written my second short film which is a comedy but given i have struggled with this first one i am now kind of thinking should i it was a huge kind of wrench to make this first one should i go through that again if that if the festival world is not the best space for comedies thanks um, in terms of having a theatrical screening to, to boost the exposure of the film, um, it can help, um, but y you'd have to make sure that you got a lot of good people to come. I think um, you, y the first thing I'd say would probably be to, to send it to distributors. Um, because then you know that they'll see it because a distributor will watch something if you send it to them. Um, but, but it can't help. But I wouldn't, if, if it, I wouldn't say spend an extortionate amount of money trying to do that because it, it might not be the most um, important thing. I think it would be more important in, in terms of distribution, getting a sales agent, it'd be more important to make sure that you got all the sales agents you were interested in to, to see the film. And I think you... I mean more just to give it a platform after that. What, what would be the best result for you from that screening? I want people to see it, and at the moment I feel like they're not seeing it. Then yeah, then yeah, then it would... That would definitely get more people to, to see it. If you want the widest audience possible, then online would be... Yeah, and online and then the, even the more hundreds of Twitter followers that follow those, they tweet, here's my new, here's my new work. That mm. would guarantee you. Uh, in response to your second question, though, I, I, I think, w is it worth going through it if the festival route is difficult? Uh, I think if, if, if you followed that logic, a lot of people would give up um, because, because the, the ratio of filmmakers to, to festival screenings, you know, it's so hard to get into these decent festivals just because well, Clermont-Ferrand had 8,000 submissions uh, in uh, this year and, and I think they paid about 150 shorts. So that's what, over, just a bit over 1% of, of, of everything they got. You know, it's extremely competitive. You are a filmmaker that's looking to develop a comedy voice um, and and develop as a filmmaker and short films, regardless of whether they get the va the end validation that you that you want from a <coughs> festival audience, d doing that uh, s simply in and of itself is good is good experience. Yeah, it's but I think every short film is pretty gut busting <laughs> in terms of everyone always has to pull together and raise the money and stuff. But um, there's still a very good arena for you to develop your comedy writing skills. To, for script development, to, for directing actors, for, for all those things. And why, why, why you, you've got to make the best work you can, I think, without being afraid that it won't get played in a festival. I think thinking like that before you've made a short. No, I just wonder if the market's kind of changing to the point where Philip was talking about, I agree, to do something like kind of quick and dirty, that you can get it up there quick and cheap. And maybe between actually get focusing on doing your first cheap low budget feature, yeah. which, because let's face it, a good short film that you've put quite a lot of effort into yes, is a yeah. huge amount of work. Yep. I just wonder if the quality short film in the middle, unless you're through a BFI scheme, I is kind of, if the kind of rationale for that is, is kind of going away. Well, the, the market is ch changing in that there are, there are, there's an ever increasing amount of work in circulation and still probably roughly th the same amount of festivals if we're just talking about festivals the same amount of screening time for a festival that will run over four days or a week uh you know i imagine submissions will only go up and up and up and up for these mm -hmm. festivals so that if you if we want to call it a market that 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 is changing uh in a downward sense that the competition on based on volume is is getting increasingly tough um 
I suppose we haven't emphasized enough the importance of having a show reel without. With, I mean, there yeah. are, there, I've come across in lots of short films that just for some reason I don't know why haven't got into any festivals, but have been a fantastic piece of work. So yeah. when they need to show someone that work to get another bit of money or whatever, yeah. then you know it's not going to go anywhere. So and with comedy, you might find you need with anything really, but with comedy, you might find you need to go in between different sort of, you know, areas, you might be going to like Channel 4 for some, or BBC comedy, which is more sort of TV, but people do float between sort of like, you know, the Edinburgh stand-up circuit, TV and film. So whatever you're developing, it you need to do it for the sake of developing that, that your work and your characters and all your skills, rather than just thinking about festi film festivals. I mean, comedy is, is a um, difficult genre anyway for short films because it's probably the one that people make more than any other genre and it's probably the worst in terms of the work that's made. Yeah. Because comedy is, um, has to be right, has to have brilliant script, comic timing, you know, loads of things have to be right. You just see endless, endless, com endless comedies that maybe are quite funny to the people that made them, but... <laughs> Not it's very difficult. Very yeah. funny. It's very to be subjective. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, also, I guess you get more comedy shorts that are more like a sketch or a gag, yeah. which may not get programmed at a film festival because the programmers yeah. have got their kind of, you know, cinema hats on and are thinking about story. But that doesn't mean that it isn't good in another way because you might be trying to show someone else that you can do that kind of comedy. Mm -hmm. So. It's slightly different. London Short skill. Film Festival, we do a couple of comedy programs. We think it's important to sh showcase that work. But when yeah. I program for the London Film Festival, and uh, Norma knows this, I'd, I've never programmed a comedy uh, in any yeah. of this, in the, ever, <laughs> the six years that I've been doing yeah. it. Actually, no, that's not true. I've been, these the dry comedy, you know, the sort yeah. of dark comedy. Dark comedy. Um, uh, but it was great festivals. that Simon programmed your film into LFF. Um, and that was really good to see that something that was that kind of, you know, co you know, audience pleasing comedy did, did got into the festival. So it kind of sort of proves that big festivals do look, yeah. look at all kinds of work. That all sounds very promising to me, actually. <laughs> Don't think you need to worry. Um, are there any other questions? Um, Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, when approaching distributors, um, that obviously when you're making a short film, you have kind of licensing agreements for music and, you know, anyone that you have involved that you may be doing good faith. And then if you get a distributor on, on board, is there a difficulty with legal aspects that you then maybe need to renegotiate? And is that your responsibility as a producer or do you do that kind of in connection with the distributor? Yeah. That's a good question. That's important to um, to think about, um, particularly with music rights. Um, it would, it should be something which you, as a producer, are in charge of because you will have the hold those relationships. And it's important to make sure that you've got um, some sort of formal agreement with them if uh, if you are taking someone's music, um, because if there are any conflicts with the music rights, the film won't be able to be sold no matter how good it is unless unless that's resolved. Um, so that is that is very, very important. Um, also, um, actors clearance forms as well, making sure that you have um, formal things. It, it, yes, it is important, but if you're, I, I don't want that to make everyone think that you have to jump through hoops and have several different lawyers in order to make a short film. Um, it, it's important if you think that it is going to be any kind of issue, I think. If you're using licensed music then from, from a, a record label, then you absolutely need to make sure that you have that done. If you're making... But it's because I've been kind of through feature delivery processes to studios and in the sense it's, it's not as complicated as that or is there a point where if you are going to show it you know on channel four or to a broadcaster that you would have to have those similar kind of documents we, we would we would need to know that you have obtained all the permissions if if you sign an agreement with a distributor it <coughs> will state in the agreement that you need to be sure that you own every aspect of the film um, so so it would be important to have those to, to have that certain yeah. Thanks. 
Have we got time for one more question? I know we've, come, we've run over slightly. So just one more last question. But I don't know who... <clears throat> if we've missed anyone, you'll have to come and ask us quickly before you go. Thanks. Um, I've got a, a question, well, since we've got three people that are dealing with so many films, about runtime. So a short film, how long is the longest a short film can be? And then on, in your experience, you must kind of have a kind of an average of what they normally come in at and when people get bored. <laughs> Phil? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the London Short Film Festival, we up to now we've had an hour as our limit. Um, we do take slightly longer documentaries. Documentary work tends to be over 30 minutes, 35, 45 minutes. The weirdest thing we received this year was a Nigel Slater cooking program. <laughs> Uh, from uh, I don't know why we got sent it, but they actually paid the entry fee, and it was a 60-minute TV. <laughs> they obviously not done their research. Uh, we might cut it down to 45 minutes because you do end up getting a lot of documentaries that are pushing the 60-minute mark. Um, we're a big festival in the sense that we have 25 programs of shorts, so if something is 35, 40 minutes and we really like it, we will try and fit it in somehow. We did a program of slightly longer dramas this year um, as part of a sort of afternoon event where the films were 30, 35 minutes long because we thought they were really strong. When I program for the London Film Festival, I have three programs um, to, to put together. And to put a 30 minute film in, it's gonna have to be absolutely outstanding because that will be three 10 minute films or... Um, so, I mean, I don't really bother that much about length. I think people should make the film that they need to make and you know, but you know, a lot of people wouldn't agree with that because, you know, where are you going to place a film that's 25 minutes, 30 minutes long? Uh, it, a lot of festivals just just won't consider it um, because it, even though they may say their limit is 30 minutes, they'll probably only be programming stuff that's 10, 15 minutes. This country, we do tend to make shorter, short films, so 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes at the most. Uh, Europe, they seem to make stuff a lot longer. Denmark has a whole history of making 45 minute short films. Um, it's like the, kind of this mid-length thing. So yeah, I don't, again, there's, it's, there's no rules really. You just have to look at what festival rules are for each festival in terms of length. I think rushes until the last couple of years, like the limit was 12 minutes for that festival. And then they did this selection for longer short films, but I think even the length, the maximum length for that was 20 minutes so um yeah it's it's just whatever you feel your film needs to be really that's a long answer to a short question for the purposes of the scheme that we run it's 59 minutes um but so so we will support anything up to 59 minutes i, I agree with almost uh, well everything that philip said um it's just got to work on its own terms, hasn't it? If it's 18 minutes, it's got to be 18 to 25 minutes. It's got to be 18 to 25 really, really good minutes. Um, because if it's not, you'll you'll get foot tapping and there'll never be some kind of, kind of narrative slack probably in it. If it's six, seven minutes, you're going to get away with a lot more, you're more likely to get away with a rough and ready short. No one's going to watch a kind of rough and ready 25 minutes short I don't think it's got to be it's got to be really really well crafted if you go back and look at uh, kind of pr previous BAFTA and Oscar winners a lot of them are really long <laughs> um, in, in the short film category anyway um, and perhaps that's got something to do with getting closer to a character in that time frame which is very difficult to do in a much shorter length short and therefore building an emotional attachment to that character and therefore those those big prizes go to things that make you know really pull pull you in emotionally i i, I don't know someone should do a phd on it probably but it went from one extreme to the other i think they did mixtape one year which was two minutes yeah. yeah which won and then the following year it was until the river runs red which was 30 minutes yeah. wasn't it yeah and wasp, Very wasp was 24 minutes yeah, yeah. do you yeah. have a maximum length that you we don't on? we don't have a maximum no. length but i i don't think we would tend to take something which is up to 59 minutes i think <laughs> I think um, it's to allow docs to, to get yeah, in. Yeah, sure. I think sort of a, a good place would be maybe around 15 minutes. Okay. But I, I vaguely remember someone on a panel saying 
uh, once I heard him say, um, when making a film, make it to the length that you think it should be, then make it 30% shorter. And I don't think that's necessarily true, but I would say don't make it any longer than it needs to be. Yeah. And in terms of this idea of um, are people going to turn the film off after one or two minutes? Um, you know, so the best bit has to be at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, again, I don't think you need, you know, you shouldn't really be thinking about no. things like that when you're making the film. Um, you know, you have to be sort of strong in your vision and to do what you feel you have to do. And a lot of programmers maybe just might skip through the first couple of minutes and move into the film yeah. a bit to get more of an idea um, of what the film's like in terms of its look and its uh, sort of its um, tone. Um, <laughs> before actually sort of going back to it and revisiting it. I mean, I do that quite a lot when yeah. looking at London Film Festival films because there's so many films coming through, there's 3,000. Um, you kind of have to sort of be quite honest with yourself and you can get an idea of the film by sort of going through it sort of a little bit at a time and then maybe thinking, no, this is really, <coughs> the sound's terrible, I can't hear what these yeah. actors are saying or the, Cinematography is awful, um, you can't see anything. So it doesn't matter how great the story is, it's not gonna stay in the DVD player for very long. Um, but, but this is a whole nother discussion yeah. about how to <laughs> well, select some good, good tips festivals. there, I think, yeah. I'm afraid we're gonna have to wrap up now. I'm really sorry if we didn't um, get your question in there, um, but thanks very much for coming and thanks to the panel. Virgin Media Shorts, championing undiscovered talent.